Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Mythology Explained. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Zeus and Odin. Let's begin with their many similarities. Both Allfathers and heads of their pantheons, Zeus and Odin are divine kings. Odin's high seat resides in Asgard, the dwelling place of the Aesir gods, and Zeus's high seat resides on Mount Olympus, the dwelling of the Olympians. They are each depicted as older men, with long white hair and long white beards. Odin is often portrayed wielding his spear, Gangnir, in his right hand, and Zeus is often portrayed with a crackling bolt of lightning in his right hand. Zeus is strongly associated with the eagle, which is one of his sacred animals, and Odin is strongly associated with the raven, of which two, Hugin and Munin, are his companions. And unlike the gods of monotheistic religions, neither Zeus nor Odin is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. These two gods are linked by many parallels, and naturally, because of this, we, as inquisitive primates, are filled with the need to know, unequivocally, who the more powerful of the two truly is, and who, if pitted against one another in an all-out tooth and nail, fang and claw fight to the bitter end, would emerge victorious. This head-to-head -head is perhaps more interesting for the reasons these two gods differ than for the reasons they're similar. Zeus is largely defined by the wake of destroyed enemies he's left in his path. He led the Olympians in a successful war against the Titans, he defeated Typhon, the king of monsters, in single combat, and he successfully led the Olympians against the giant uprising. Zeus boasts an unblemished record when it comes to matters of battle and war. The same, however, cannot be said about Odin. In the mythic past when the Aesir gods and the Vanir gods were at war, Odin was not able to lead the Aesir to victory. The two tribes of gods fought to a draw, and the fires of war were quenched by a hostage exchange in which members of each tribe went to live with the other. The second time Odin's battle prowess is called into question is in the mythic future, during the events of Ragnarok. In this apocalyptic battle, Odin will be devoured by Fenrir, a monstrous wolf and one of Loki's offspring. These records speak for themselves. Zeus is 3-0. Odin has a draw and a loss. What's more, there is a quote from the Iliad that really elevates Zeus's power to another level. Here it is. Then you will see how far I am strongest of all the immortals. Come, you gods, make this endeavor, that you all may learn this. Let down out of the sky a cord of gold. Lay hold of it, all you who are gods and all who are goddesses. Yet not even so can you drag down Zeus from the sky to the ground. Not Zeus, the High Lord of Council. Though you try until you grow weary. Yet, whenever I might strongly be minded to pull you, I could drag you up, earth and all, and sea and all with you, then fetch the golden rope about the horn of Olympus and make it fast, so that all once more should dangle in midair. So much stronger am I than the gods, and stronger than mortals. What this quote is essentially saying is that Zeus is more powerful than all of the other Olympians combined. I'm not sure how literally that quote was meant to be taken. It could be tainted by embellishment, which is often a characteristic of boasting, but nonetheless, it does speak volumes about Zeus's power. This quote is also made all the more impactful because I have not found any such equivalent quote that pertains to Odin. Judging from their resumes, I would say that Zeus, being able to defeat Odin in one-on-one -on -one combat, is evident. Of course, when diving into this sort of discussion, more than one aspect needs to be taken into consideration. So while it may seem that the advantage goes to Zeus, more than just combat ability needs to be factored in. While much of the mythology built around Zeus centers on his power, the focus of Odin's own story is quite different. His myths mostly involve the accumulation of magic, knowledge, and wisdom. He was taught Sade, a feminine type of magic, from the Vanir goddess Freya. He became the master of poetry by stealing the mead of poetry and bringing it back to Asgard. He learned the secrets of the runes and runic magic by impaling himself with his spear and hanging himself from Yggdrasil, the world tree, for nine days and nine nights. He sacrificed one of his eyes to Mimisbrun, Mimir's well, so that he could gain its mystic visions, and he embalmed the severed head of Mimir with herbs, resurrecting it so that he could learn its secret knowledge. Odin's mental and magical mastery is showcased in his victory over the wisest giant, Vafthrothnir, 
in a battle of wits in which they each asked each other questions until one of them was unable to answer. What's interesting about this last myth is that there's another similar myth involving Thor, except in Thor's case, he defeats the strongest giant. This is interesting because it further emphasizes Odin's pursuit of knowledge, not strength, and lends further credence to Zeus being able to defeat Odin in single combat, by nature of showcasing Thor to be the strongest of the Aesir gods, not Odin. To the best of my knowledge, there's no instance in which someone is able to get the better of Odin through deceit, trickery, intellect, or any such matters of the mind. The same, however, cannot be said of Zeus. There are several accounts of Zeus being deceived or tricked throughout Greek mythology. Hera was the main force behind most of these occasions. Here are two examples. One, Hera drugs Zeus, binds him to a bed, and attempts to overthrow him. Two, Hera seduces Zeus and makes love to him, keeping him distracted so that the Greeks can regain the upper hand in the Trojan War. And herein lies Odin's path to victory, using his cunning, guile, and magic, not relying on his strength in battle. Harnessing his knowledge and wisdom, and consulting with his two ravens, Hugin and Munin, who report back to him at the end of each day, sharing with him news of the world, it isn't unreasonable to say that Odin could have gained knowledge of the child prophesied, should he be born, to overthrow Zeus. Metis, an Oceanid, meaning one of the 3,000 water nymphs produced by the union of Titans Oceanus and Tethys, was a consort of Zeus. It was prophesied that she would bear extremely powerful children, first a daughter and then a son, who would have the strength to supplant his father. When Zeus learnt of this, he tricked Metis into transforming into a fly so that he could swallow her and forestall any such eventuality from coming to fruition. But it was already too late at least partially. Metis was already pregnant with the daughter, Athena, and because Metis was trapped inside Zeus, it was as if Zeus himself was impregnated. So Athena, who emerged from Zeus's head, was born fully grown and clad in armor, ready for battle. My theory about Odin's path to defeating Zeus revolves around getting Metis to bear her second child, the son who would have the power to challenge and defeat Zeus. I believe this to be possible, for there is no mention at least none that I know of, of Metis being dead. She had merely been swallowed by Zeus, just as Zeus's five siblings had been swallowed by their father, Cronus. And if Cronus can be forced to disgorge five gods, then presumably Zeus can be forced to disgorge one. Therefore, Odin could reach out to Hera in secret and propose to her a plan to overthrow her husband. I believe that Hera would be amenable to Odin's machinations for she had been scorned by Zeus's innumerable infidelities, and with the backing of other gods, had already attempted to overthrow Zeus on another occasion. Hera could seduce Zeus, make love to him, and then keep Zeus's divine seed for later use. Then she could enlist the powers of the god Hypnos, who could lull Zeus into a deep sleep, which isn't far-fetched because there's a precedent. Hera used this same ploy so that she could set furious winds against Hercules, while he sailed home after sacking Troy. Once Zeus was ensnared by sleep's spell, he could be forced to disgorge Metis. Following that, Hera could use the seed she had saved after her seduction of Zeus to impregnate Metis with Zeus's child. And finally, Metis could be whisked away by Odin, who would take Metis to Asgard, where she could bear her child in relative safety. After the child was born, he could be reared to despise his biological father, Zeus. It wouldn't be difficult for Metis to stoke such enmity, for Zeus had swallowed her and trapped her inside of him, giving her more than enough reason to be furious, and Odin, who has been pitted against Zeus in this hypothetical scenario, would act as surrogate father to Zeus's son, further indoctrinating him, stoking his heart with a burning desire to usurp Zeus and become the king of Olympus himself. In summary, if Zeus and Odin were to meet on some distant field of battle, and settle their contest through strength of arms, Zeus would emerge the victor. But if Odin weren't drawn into such a fight, instead relying on his mind and his magic, then Odin would emerge the victor, by using to his advantage the ancient Greek prophecy, the divines, how Zeus would be overthrown by the son he would sire by Metis. Who do you think would win? Let us know in the comment section below.